Hello and welcome to Man Cave Media. On this channel I talk about beer, sneakers, tech, and toys. If you're new here, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Also, please connect with me on social media. I'm on Instagram at media.mancave and on Facebook and Twitter at mancavemedia.org. And finally, if you enjoy listening to podcasts, please check out the League of Sedentary Gentlemen. We're available wherever you get your podcasts or direct from our website at man-cave-media.org. All right, uh, after not so patiently waiting for almost a year, my Steam Deck finally arrived. Thank you. Let's check it out. All right, so yes, the day is finally here. Um, I know that there are a ton of these guys out there already, and there are a ton of reviews out here for this guy already, but I can't help myself. I wanted this thing so badly and waited a very long time for it, and it's finally here. So uh, this is gonna be a uh, two-part series. In this video, I'm just gonna do an unboxing and a basic setup of the Steam Deck, and you know, uh, first thoughts, first reactions, rather. And then I'm gonna do a second video where I'm gonna show you how to set this up to be an emulation beast, basically. Um, if you're into retro gaming like I am, uh, the, the Steam Deck has huge potential to be a, a retro mobile gaming device. And there are other videos out there already. I'm gonna follow the same model. There's, uh, there's some really cool software out there for Steam Deck uh, to accomplish this and make it look really clean and have it look like it's been baked into the UI. And so I'll be going over that in the second video as well as kind of a kind of a long-term use like thought, um, not thought, opinion, I guess, of the Steam Deck after I've been using it for a couple weeks. Uh, but for now, uh, let's release this bad boy from its packaging. A lot of people criticized Valve for the way that they did the pre-orders of the Steam Deck, but I for one, um, thought it was refreshing a bit to see uh, to see a company do something or at least attempt to do something about the uh, problem with scalpers so this was a pretty hot product when it launched for pre-orders and a ton of people wanted it and just like anything else you know there was gonna be a problem with scalping but what, what Valve did was they just basically left it open for pre-orders. Anybody who wanted to pre-order one, they could pretty much just get one. And the only difference it made, like how quickly you pre-ordered it, was your delivery date or expected delivery date. Mine um, was quarter two. And so here we are in June. It just arrived at my doorstep today. So there you go. But I had no problems with it. A lot of people criticized it. Maybe it was scalpers who were criticizing. Yeah, maybe. Assholes. But anyways, let's continue on. So I knew going into it that it was going to be a while before I actually got to play with my Steam Deck. And I was, you know, like I said, I was fine with it. Let's turn it this way here. All right. Just a quick notice on the very top of the box saying, uh, Plug it in. Plug in, power on. So, in uh, many different languages. And oh, I mean, this is uh, this is very minimalistic uh, packaging here. They basically shipped it in the case, uh, wrapped up in plastic. So that's cool. And I am assuming this is the power brick. Get this open first. All right, it is um, smaller than I thought it would be. USB-C, I already knew it was gonna be USB-C. Oh, but no removable cable. Valve, shame on you. Anyways, um, at least it's USB-C, so I mean, you can use any any USB-C charger. Uh, when this thing dies, I say when, because it's not a matter of if or when, they always do. 
Uh, in the bottom of the box for the charger, there is a uh, booklet, owner's manual looks like. And that is all, very, very minimalistic packaging. I like it. Less for the landfill, everything is cardboard. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let's not put that on the floor just yet. Peasy. All right, your games are going places. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, that was terrible. anymore and that stuff. so the carrying case is quite nice um, really good material it reminds me of my switch carrying case really nice I like it oh that's cool little security tab there Security tab, kind of like them off-white Nikes. <laughs> Moving on. Bam, front and center. Oh, the smell of new electronics. <sighs> Get you out. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it's way lighter than I thought. I'm gonna set it aside for a moment. And underneath, you got this ribbon to make it, you know, easy to pull it out. And that's about it. It's a it's a very basic case. Um, I would have liked to see a spot, you know, uh, caved in for the charge brick itself, but there isn't. So I guess it would have to be significantly larger than it is. So I guess, oh, here we go. So underneath on the bottom side, there's like a, a caved in area Right there, it's kind of hard for my camera to pick that up. Use the other camera here. And, I mean, you can shove this right there, which is exactly what I'll do. Bam. Stays nice and nice and t snug in there. So, okay, that's cool. Feel better about it now. <laughs> like, most likely when I travel, uh, I'll probably just share um, my Nintendo Switch uh, charger with the Steam Deck. Um, but I like that there is actually a spot on the case for this guy. So that's always helpful. All right, for the, the unit itself, I mean, plenty of pictures and plenty of video out there of it. You guys are aware of what it looks like, but one thing I noticed immediately when I took it out, you know, when, now that I have it in hand, it's it's much lighter than it looks. Like, much lighter. I, I was worried about um, fatigue, you know, holding this thing uh, for like long gaming sessions. Uh, but I am no longer worried about that. Uh, not at all. It's, it's a, uh, it might even be, I mean, without having a scale handy, I don't know for sure, but it might even be lighter than my Switch. So I'm interested now to see that I might uh, uh, I might break out my food scale and do a little comparison because it's it's much lighter than I thought it would be. That's for sure. Um, the buttons feel really nice. The <laughs> they go right to the edge of the device. I mean the the B uh, that B button is like. Holding on for dear life, man. It's about to slide off the edge. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, the D-pad on the other side, same deal, right to the edge. They utilized every inch of space. And uh, I thought, you know, I was a little iffy on the button layout. But again, now that I have it in my hand, I mean, it's, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, the touch pads, you know, it is what it is. I didn't really use the touch pad on the Steam controller that I had. 
Um, I don't know how much I'll use these. Maybe for games that call for a mouse, I'll probably use the touchpad for that. Same way I did with the uh, Steam controller. The triggers feel really nice. Yeah, good quality triggers. The L1 and R1 button are really nice. Same with the back buttons. <clears throat> uh, same with the back buttons. Really, uh, really clicky. They feel they feel like they're really good quality. Uh, the D-pad also really nice. Yeah. Uh, the thumbsticks have like a soft, uh, rubberized finish to them. Uh, they feel really nice as well. And yeah, layout. I mean, power button and the USB-C is on top. Don't really like that, actually. And then on the bottom is the slot for the SD card. I would have liked to see um, the USB-C port be on the bottom of the device, but what are you gonna do, man? Um, they put it on top, so that's where it is. Volume buttons are also on top. It is not a rocker, it's two separate buttons, plus and minus, and they are right next to the headphone jack. And that is pretty much it. I really, really like the way this feels in hand. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by the weight of this thing and the way it feels with the button layout, like the curvature of the device, the grips, really comfortable. Nintendo, I hope you're taking notes because compared to the Switch, this thing is very comfortable to hold in hand. <sighs> All right, so let's get it plugged in and uh, start getting it set up, shall we? Throw some power to this guy. Again, those of you who subscribe to my channel, you know that I don't play a lot of AAA titles, so this is not going to be a benchmark by any stretch of the imagination, um, by any definition of the word. <laughs> um, but I will go through the setup process. I will get a couple of my favorite games installed, just so you guys can kind of see. If you're still waiting patiently for your Steam Deck, as I was. All right, this... Uh... This cable is not terribly long. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, again, I will be uh, probably just sharing my Nintendo Switch power adapter with this guy, so it's not a huge deal, but still, they could have made it a little bit longer. All right, though. All right, so as soon as you plug it in, it's gonna start booting up. Oh, I forgot to mention straight away, uh, I chose the middle uh, uh, option, not the cheapest one, not the most expensive one, right in the middle, the the, the one I'm calling the Goldilocks uh, Steam Deck. And uh, after seeing some teardown videos from, uh, mostly from Linus Tech Tips and from Gamers Nexus, uh, I kind of regret my decision a little bit. Uh, it seems like the base model, like if you're not afraid of ripping into devices, uh, it would appear that the base model is actually the go-to uh, price point because um, it's not going to be too difficult to upgrade these guys. So I should have went with the base model and then just bought a drive, but it is what it is. I went with the mid-range and I'm happy, or I guess I'm fine, I should say, not happy, but I'm fine to use um, SD cards to run my games. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, but for the sake of running uh, retros, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of space on the main card, uh, ma the main card, uh, on the main SSD uh, to install emulators to play my my retro games. So, all right, it is all the way booted up. So English PST. Oh, this part you may not see. Let's let it connect to the wireless here really quick. Wham, bam, thank you. So now it looks like it is um, installing some updates. We'll go ahead and let it do its thing. It's been a while since I've been this excited for something. Uh, I've been waiting really patiently for this guy. Like I said, I put my pre-order in in July, like most of you, and yeah, it's been a long wait, uh, having to see other people get their hands on them and start doing videos and 
uh, watching all the teardowns, and I was just, I was getting real anxious. I'm, I'm really happy that it's here finally. So, waiting for it to do some updates and install a few things, like, that's fine. As long as it's here. Alright, the uh, estimated time remaining keeps jumping around. <laughs> it started with three minutes. Uh, it went all the way down to 3 minutes and 8 seconds, and then it jumped up to 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and then now it's 3 minutes and 44 seconds. It was all the way down to 3 minutes and 8 seconds a moment ago. It's all over the place, but um, I have fairly good uh, internet connectivity back here in my office, and whatever it's downloading, it's uh, pretty big. So let's see what the final tally is when it's done. So I really, I really like the finish on this guy. I was thinking about getting a, a skin for it. Uh, D Brand makes a, a really nice skin, and I am a sucker for some robot camo. Uh, but I don't know. I, I kind of like the finish on this. I might leave it be for a while, and then once the uh, uh, my skin is so the oil in my skin rather is so acidic. I mean, it's only a matter of time before it starts breaking this thing down. Um, but I might wait until. Uh, you start seeing uh, some heavy signs of use before I skin it. Because, uh, yeah, I really like this. I really like the finish on this guy. Alright, so we finally are at a sign-in screen. Let's go ahead and get signed in. You may not see this. Alright. If you don't have two-factor authentication already enabled, I highly recommend you do so. <laughs> it's telling me my Steam Deck's already complete my purchase. <laughs> I think it's done, homie. <laughs> Alright, so you guys know what game I'm going to install right now. <laughs> if you're subscribers of my channel, that is, anyway. How about some Alien Isolation? So there it is, already installed. That was quick. Uh, let's go ahead and get uh, Resident Evil installed as well. It's also one of my favorite games. Recently was able to grab it for the Switch for $10, which is a steal. Um, if you're a fan of Resident Evil, um, not sure if that's still a thing that's going on, but it was on sale. Let's back to the library. Also, these are the only six games that I own. I just realized how it uh, filters them out. Uh, these are the only six games that I own at the moment that are rated great on deck. I don't really care for Resident Evil Zero that much, so I'm not going to install it. It's just going to waste space on my hard drive. Um, so let's see uh, all games. Now, why wouldn't Bully be... Okay, it's got... Let's see. Game info. Steam Deck compatibility playable. Let's see details. This game doesn't support Steam Deck's native display resolution and may experience degraded performance. Oh, interesting. So there you go. Let's install it anyway, because I like it. And that's why. Interesting. Doesn't seem like it's gonna let me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Dead Rising, this has a question mark, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City also has a exclamation point, Vice City has a, whoa, Grand Theft Auto Vice City has a, just a, a nope, <laughs> not playable, why, let's see, game info, unsupported, details, Valve's testing indicates this title is unsupported on Steam Deck. Some or all this game currently does not function on Steam Deck. Okay. But. The other Vice City. Hold on. I have two Vice Cities on here for some reason. I don't know why. Let's see. Game info. Unknown. Valve is still testing this title. Okay. That's weird. Interesting. 
Uh, let's see, Liberty City. Playable. This game launcher setup tool may require the touchscreen or virtual keyboard or have difficult to read text. This game has minor graphics display issues on Steam Deck. Interesting. Okay. Uh, San Andreas. Let's see. Game info. Details. Oh man, this one has a lot. Some functionality is not accessible when using the default controller configuration, requiring the use of the touchscreen or virtual keyboard or community configuration. Nah, that's not a big deal, right? Am I crazy? This game sometimes shows mouse, keyboard, or non-Steam Deck controller icons. This game supports Steam Deck's native display resolution, but does not set it by default. and may require you to configure the display resolution manually. I don't see those as big problems, but... I guess they have to list them, right? Otherwise, they'd get a lot of pushback. So, let's see. Star Wars Battlefront. Playable. Some functionality is not accessible when using the default controller configuration, requiring the use of touchscreen or virtual keyboard. This is kind of same as uh, San Andreas. Entering some text requires manually invoking the on-screen keyboard. Yeah, okay, this is like minor things. I, I don't I don't consider these big hiccups uh, I'm gonna revisit I wonder if it has a I Wonder if it has a limit of how many games you could download at a time Because I really want to revisit why I can't install bully even though it has the exclamation point and it says, you know, it's got some issues, but it's it, it's playable. It should be playable. Why won't it let me install it? So the Force Unleashed 2 just has a nope <laughs> in the bottom corner there. Um, let's see. The Force Unleashed has a nope. Starfighter has an exclamation point. Most of the Star Wars games have an exclamation point. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, looks like it's still untesting. Galactic Battleground Saga. All right, well, so as you can see, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really use my, my Steam account a ton. There's certain games that I really like to play that I have on Steam. Uh, Dead Rising 2 has an, ex uh, I mean, a question mark. Uh, yeah, Dead Rising 3, question mark. So, but anyways, the game that I probably use Steam for the most, which is uh, uh, Alien Isolation, uh, is great on deck. So that's a good sign. The other game that I play a lot is Bully. And, you know, it's got that exclamation point. I hope that it lets me install it. I hope it's just mad because I have two downloads going already. And it just won't let me. It won't let me install it. And I don't know why. All right, so uh, Alien Isolation is downloaded and installed. Um, but really quick before I do a test, um, I searched around. Uh, I searched around uh, the Steam forums, and it appears the problem we're having with Bully um, is a patch, or I'm sorry, is a problem that's been patched, and there is a pending update that needs to be applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart it really quick. And see if uh, after the reboot and it applies that patch, if I can uh, install Bully. So stand by for that really quick, and then uh, I'll go ahead and launch uh, Alien Isolation. We'll see how it runs. So that was a fairly quick update. It's already saying. So that was a fairly quick update. It's already saying that it was complete and it's launching Steam. There we go. So really quick before we do a test of Alien Isolation, let's go. See if I can now install. Hey, there we go. All right, so yeah, that was a bug that Steam was aware of and they fixed it. So after I applied the patch, it is now letting me uh, install it. So there it goes, it's downloading now. So let's go back and let's run Alien Isolation.
Speakers sound pretty good. The screen looks really nice. I really dig this. And of course, I mean, it's... It's playing the game no problem at all. I mean... Again, uh, subscribers to my channel, you, you know I don't play a lot of, uh, a lot of the latest AAA titles, so... There's no reason at all why it shouldn't run really well on Steam Deck. This isn't a, this isn't a brand new game by any stretch. Um, but, I mean, it's a game that I enjoy playing, and it's a game that I will be playing a lot on this Steam Deck. So it was important to me that it worked, and I mean, it works. Look at this thing. The screen on this is really nice. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, the top tier level you know, with the matte screen. Uh, I don't know what that looks like, but I planned on buying a screen protector for this that will make it a matte screen. Those do exist, and uh, I'll drop a link in the description of this video if you guys want to grab one for yourselves. But, I mean, on the surface, though, this screen looks really good. So, I mean, I'm not unhappy with it by any stretch. So, yeah. Yeah, I dig this a lot. All right, so let's go back. Oops. One more thing I wanna do in this video really quick is um, connect my controllers. So I have an extra, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you saw me review this. It's the, uh, the Power A. Um, so if you're a subscriber to my channel, you saw me review this guy. This is the Power A Fusion uh, for the uh, Nintendo Switch. And I have an extra one that I use for traveling around. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, carry around two controllers when I travel. I want to be able to use this guy for my Switch and for the Steam Deck. And there's really not a reason why you shouldn't be able to use it. Um, but I'm going to go through setting it up really quick. So let's go to settings. And then Bluetooth. And then hit the pairing button on the controller. And it shows up as LIC Pro Controller. All right, and now it shows that it's paired. All right, I don't know what happened the first time, but so now let's go back and launch Alien Isolation and see if it works with the controller. I mean, it should, right? All right, there we go. We are using the Nintendo Switch controller. Like I said, there was no reason why... <clears throat> like I said, there was no reason why I, th I think it shouldn't work. But I was just curious, you know. And uh, it was crucial for my setup because I really didn't want to have to carry around two controllers. But, yeah.
Yeah, it works. Works really well, actually. All right, so overall, my first impressions are I really like the Steam Deck. Um, right away, out of the box, uh, it's much lighter than I thought it was gonna be. And it feels really good in hand, the, the design of the grip and the layout of the buttons. It's really nice, uh, really, you know, a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, overall, like the size of the device, I was really worried that it was gonna be too heavy and a little bit too awkward to hold. But actually, you know, they nailed it. You know, it's, it's really comfortable in hand and I really enjoy the gameplay experience. Uh, overall, I mean, you saw what it looks like for how they do their ratings for games that you can play on the Steam Deck. And it seems to me like, well, at least the games that I have in my library, I know I don't have a, a really extensive uh, Steam library at the moment. With this device, of course, that's gonna grow, but um, anyhow, as you saw there, like some of the problems that they have, they're really minor issues to me, like having to bring up the onboard, uh, or on-screen keyboard rather, onboard, um, but having to use the on-screen keyboard and having to adjust resolutions and stuff like that, I don't see those as major issues. So of course they have to label it because um, people who like, you know, casual console gamers that are coming from a Switch that wanted to give a Steam Deck a try, um, that's gonna matter, obviously. So, you know, they might not be used to messing around with control uh, button layouts and uh, having to change screen resolutions and stuff like that. So I understand why uh, they had to list that as an issue, but uh, for me, I don't see those as problems. And the one problem I did have trying to install Bully, um, it wasn't like officially, it didn't officially test as good on deck. And so it wasn't letting me install it at first, but as I mentioned, that was a bug that was um, known. Uh, uh, Valve was aware of it and they released a patch. As soon as I installed that update and rebooted my Steam Deck, it let me install it no problem. So there you go. Um, again, I'm gonna do another part to this video where I'm gonna set it up to be really what I wanted this to be when I purchased it. And that is uh, an emulation station, so to speak. like. I'm gonna use this to play a lot of retro games. A lot of, uh, I mean, I know there's already a lot of PlayStation 1 games you can get on Steam, but I'm talking more like uh, Nintendo games, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, stuff like that, that I currently have on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I wanna set this up to be a mobile version of that. And there's a lot of really neat things to do that will uh, really look nice as far as like fit and finish goes. It makes it look like it's baked into the UI and I'll go through that and show you guys how to do it and Yeah, we'll go from there. So but for for this video as far as this video is concerned My first impressions are I love the thing um, I have a feeling I'm gonna be using it a ton I'm very happy that I was able to use my switch controller with it again I didn't think there was a reason why it wouldn't work, but still, it's good to test it. And yeah, so I don't regret my purchase at all. So if you wanna see the second part of this video where I turn it into an emulation device, uh, please make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload that video. All right, so that's all I have for this one. Thank you again for stopping by. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and help feed that algorithm. I hope you have a great afternoon, and like always, thank you for watching.